This video is a direct follow-up to the last video about WordPress 5.5 and the new features it released and the potential that it allows us to remove some plugins from our website because now stuff is built in the WordPress core. And I dove a little deeper on the things that WordPress core has included, which are XML sitemaps, lazy loading of images, and auto updates. Those are three big things that people often use plugins for, and now we can potentially do that without plugins or maybe not. You'll see what I found in this video, and I think maybe you might be sticking with the plugins for some of them, because what I found is not all that great yet. Hopefully it'll be improved, but you'll see what I mean in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get into this one. If you haven't watched my WordPress version 5.5 release video, it's linked to in the description down below. Make sure you check that out because this video is based on that. So you have more context for what we're talking about in this video. And the first topic we're gonna to look at is the XML sitemap functionality that's now in WordPress core that I hoped would replace a plugin on your site, which it maybe will. So let's find out if it can. Z Pepe commented on the WordPress 5.5 video and he said this in his comment. Yoast says that even though XML sitemaps are included in WordPress, Yoast encourages that we keep their version because it's better. He's not sure how specifically that is, but it might warrant further investigation. So I investigated further, and here's what I found. When you install Yoast, your sitemap looks like this. It's a breakdown of all the different categories of pages on your site with a link to their specific sitemap. So this is a sitemap of all the sitemaps on your site. And if I click on posts or page, for example, I have those two in these tabs up here. This is the posts sitemap. It shows all the posts. And then the pages sitemap shows all the pages. And they have the number of images that are on that page and a timestamp. And this helps search engines crawl the website better and faster. So hopefully your pages are indexed faster. And that's the Yoast version. I also installed Rank Math. This is what the Rank Math version looks like. Same idea. It has the list of the posts, although it has fewer than Yoast does. Here there are five in the sitemap of sitemaps. And Yoast has seven. So why they're picking up a little more? I don't know, but that's the case. I did not go into the settings for these plugins. I just installed them, activated them, looked at the sitemap. This is what it showed me. If I open the post and page sitemap, they're very similar to Yoast. Here's the posts, has images and timestamps. And here's the pages, also has number of images and timestamps. And when you install these SEO plugins, they automatically deactivate the WordPress sitemap. It's normally found at this URL right here, your domain name, followed by WP dash sitemap.xml but when I go there it doesn't do anything even though I deleted the SEO plugins the sitemap made by WordPress is still blocked I deleted all my caching plugins if I go to this page incognito it still doesn't load I've gone into my hosting account check the HT access file to see if it's somehow being redirected and the redirect was not removed when the SEO plugins were uninstalled and I just can't find where this redirect is happening or why the WP version, the WordPress version of the sitemap is now gone. And so keep that in mind. If you think you want to use the WordPress sitemap, but you want to see what the other ones look like to compare, you might not be able to get the WordPress one back. I Googled it. I could not find any documentation on how to get it back once it's turned off. I assume that's something that's going to come out in the future. Or if you already know the answer, please leave it in the comments down below because I don't know how to get it back. So I loaded the sitemap on a different domain. And this is what the WordPress sitemap looks like at wp-sitemap.xml. It also has five, just like the Rank Math sitemap. If you click into any one of these, it then shows a list of the posts in this example, and then a list of the pages on this sitemap. And you notice the list of images is not here. So on the either of the other two, we see how many images are on the post and the timestamp. Those are both missing from the WordPress sitemap. For the Yoast and the Rank Math sitemap, if you list a page as no index, it will be removed from the sitemap. There is no such feature when using just the WordPress sitemap. So that's a big thing to think about. There's no easy way to remove pages from a WordPress sitemap using the no index feature. No images are shown on the sitemap and no timestamps are shown on the sitemap. And most sites probably don't worry about that. That's not really required. In fact, 30% or something like that of websites don't even have a sitemap, an XML sitemap. So just having this there will improve, hopefully improve, the ability for search engines to find the content on that website. But I believe there are some distinct advantages to the WordPress sitemap because we can go and edit the code and do some serious customizations. On this page right here, 
the new sitemaps functionality in WordPress 5.5. We scroll down, let me zoom in here a little bit. When we scroll down, we see that we can add custom sitemaps. We can remove certain sitemaps. We can add additional tags to sitemap entries. We can exclude a single post from the sitemap. So even though we can't use the no index feature like the SEO plugins, which is just a checkbox, super simple, we can do it manually via code. And this code would go into your functions file. You can disable sitemaps functionality completely. I should look to see if this entry is in the functions file. This might be how Yoast did it. Currently image, video, and news sitemaps are not covered because only a few websites use it. But in the future, they might add filters and hooks to be able to add it through custom code, just like on this page. There's also new classes and functions for any devs out there, available hooks and filters. So the WordPress sitemap might not be out of the box as feature rich as the Rank Math Yoast sitemaps, but the WordPress ones you can customize using the information on this page. I'll link to this page in the description down below so you can check it out if you want to. And really quick, I'm gonna see if this entry is inside my functions file to see if Yoast added that but didn't remove it. So in the sitemap, or sorry, the functions file for the child theme, which is currently active on the site, that code is not there. The code being this right here, add filter WP sitemaps enabled, return false. That is not in here. So that's not how Yoast did it. So I really have no idea how Yoast deactivated it, and I don't know how to get it back at this moment. If you go to the parent theme, let's check out this functions file. There's a lot in here, so let's just search for part of the code. Let's just copy WP underscore sitemaps underscore enabled, and then go Control F or Command F for the search box, and it's not there. Zero entries. So I don't know how Yoast did it, but Yoast did it. And that's it for the sitemaps in this video. Next topic. Graham George says, auto update, huh? I can see that ending in tears. And I know what he means. The reason he says that is because auto updates can break your website because in the past, definitely in the past, you always wanted to back up your website before you update anything because it quite often went sideways. These days it's less frequent, but things still go sideways. Things still break, things still don't work right when you update your site. And so the reason he says it's gonna end in tears is because if you enable auto update without backing up your site first before every update, it might break, then you can't get back to what you had. And right now my favorite plugin for backing up a site is WP Vivid. The reason I like it, one of the reasons I like it, is you can get the pro version for free, which is pretty awesome. I'll show you how in the video up here in the card, it's also in the description down below. My point is that I use this plugin a lot with the pro version when you click update to update anything, a plugin, a theme, or the WordPress core files, it updates the site before it does the update. So that's fantastic. And I emailed them to see if that works with auto update. And here's the response that I got. Unfortunately, WP Vivid Pro currently does not support auto backups when WordPress core, the themes or plugins are auto updated, but we are going to take a look at this and we'll consider adding support in a future release. So it's, it's positive, it's negative and positive. It's negative because it's not supported, but it's positive because they might add that functionality, in which case the enabling the auto update might be okay. And if you want to enable it, if you like to live on the edge, you can go to your plugins list and click over here, enable auto updates. You click on that and now auto update is enabled for this plugin. Because whenever a plugin update or theme update comes out, there are quite often security patches. What that patch is for is documented in the documentation. So immediately the hacker knows how to get into WordPress site because it, it outlines the security vulnerability in the security patch documentation. And so if you take a long time to update your site, your site is vulnerable for a long time and a hacker knows exactly how to take advantage of your site. So with the auto updates, that becomes a thing of the past because when things are updated immediately, the window a hacker has to get in your site is way, way smaller. But like I was saying a moment ago, the problem is if it breaks your site, then that's not great either. So usually I don't enable auto updates. I just update on my own. I use main WP to manage all my websites and WP Vivid integrates with main WP as well, which is awesome. So I can back up all my sites and then update them all with a few clicks. And I have a tutorial for that as well. It's in the description down below if you wanna check out my main WP tutorial. It is a free plugin. There are some premium add-ons that go with it, but just with the free plugin, you can manage a whole lot of stuff on multiple websites if you have multiple. If you don't have multiple websites, Forget about main WP, that's not for you. It's just for people who have multiple websites who are overwhelmed with all the stuff to do to manage them. 
It really helps out a lot. And in conclusion, although I really encourage you to update your themes and plugins in WordPress core as soon as an update is available, I would discourage you from using auto updates because I don't want your site to break. If there was an option to have this site backed up right before the auto update is, is done, right before it's completed, that would be great. But without that option present, I don't recommend you just enable auto updates because things could go sideways that you have nothing to revert back to. The next topic is lazy loading. Armand asks, I'm using auto optimize for lazy loading. Should I turn that feature off now? And the answer is maybe. I think you should turn it off and try the WordPress version of lazy optimize and see if it works better. Test your speed, test it in different browsers to see if your site performance is better using the WordPress lazy loading compared to whatever plugin you normally use for that. Trevor asks, does WP lazy load also apply to iframes and videos or just images? Right now it's just images. There are plugins like WP Rocket, which I use extensively, that does lazy loading for iframes and videos as well. Other plugins do lazy loading just for images. So it depends on which plugin you're using and what it can do, whether this could possibly replace that plugin or not. So check in the documentation of your lazy loading plugin to see if it does more than just images. If it does only images, then the WordPress version might be a better option for you because you can save using that plugin. And here's the biggest reason why you might wanna wait before you use the WP version of lazy loading. Scott writes, I think WP version 5.5 attaches loading equals lazy to images, which still isn't supported by Safari. Meaning, since all browsers on iOS devices are sandboxed to use WebKit, they do not support this. You'll still need to use JS detection for lazy loading. And you got this information from canaused.com. I've linked to this specific page in the description down below so you can check it out for yourself. And you can see which browsers support whatever feature it is, in this case, lazy loading via tribute for images and iframes. The red means it doesn't support, the green means it does. You can see some browsers didn't support it when it was first introduced, which is all of them. And now Edge, for example, didn't support it, but now it does. And global usage of this version of this browser is 0.85%, so that's not very much. Compared to iOS Safari, whose global usage for the previous version is 5.18%. Way more usage, but still doesn't support this feature. And we can confirm Scott's analysis. If we go into our website, let's just see if the images do have the lazy tag attached. Let's go to a post. Let's right click and inspect. And here's the image tag. And we see right here, it says loading equals lazy. And so that's what Scott discovered. And he also discovered that it may not be supported in lots of browsers. So this may be a reason why you don't want to turn off lazy loading yet in whatever plugin you're using, or maybe you do. Just depends on what best suits your needs. So make sure you pick the one that's right for you and your website. Next topic, Philippe writes, hi, just wondering how many plugins is too many? The answer to that depends on who you ask. Some people will say even just having one plugin on your site is too many. Others will say you can have 30 or more. It doesn't really matter how many you have. You just got to get the job done. I say you try to have as few plugins as possible, but you need to have the website do what it needs to do. Usually you do in websites for clients. Clients need certain things. You got to make sure you can deliver on those things. So you need the plugins to do that quite often, unless you're going to get into the code of the website, in which case you can replace a lot of plugins using very simple pieces of code. And I have a lot of tutorials on this channel where I show you how to do something with a plugin and I show you how to do the same thing without a plugin. And I was thinking actually, if you guys wanna have more tutorials where I show you how to get rid of plugins by replacing them with pieces of code, let me know in the comments down below because there is a lot of functionality that you can gain just by copying and pasting some code into your functions file or copying and pasting a JavaScript file into your WordPress files. And there's, there's a lot of plugins you can replace. You don't need as many plugins as you have right now on your site, I can almost guarantee it and you can have the same functionality just using code. So if you want more on that kind of tutorial, please let me know in the comments down below. And next up, you should check out this tutorial right here, which is the one for main WP that I mentioned in this video. If you have more than one website and you're tired of managing plugin updates, theme updates, WordPress core updates for all of them, make sure you check this out because it can make your life really easy. And I use only the free add-ons. I use the free plugin and the free add-ons for this video, and you'll be happy you watched it because it'll save you a lot of time and frustration by applying what I show you in this video. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.